Now after calculating all the reactions at point A, the next thing that we are going to do is drawing the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram. So now let's move on for drawing the shear force diagram first. Now let's consider the wing on which the shear force is going to act. Now if you look at the figure carefully, I bring back those triangular and trapezoidal force acting on this wing. This is just to let you know that how there will be the variability of a shear force. Now instead of these point loads, we will be actually using the real load which is acting on it. These point loads were just to calculate the reactions. But when we are dealing with uh, bending moment diagram or shear force diagram in that case we need to consider the real forces that's are actually acting on this wing as you know that we start from the left hand side so first we are going to consider the region from most extreme point up to the point where 15 kN force is acting so this region is of distance 2.4 meter so this x will be measured from here so i make it like this the vertical axis will be showing you the shear force and this horizontal will actually be showing you the horizontal distance or x that's along the center line of the wing. So when we are at uh, this point there won't be any shear but as soon as we move towards the right side we are going to have shear. Now let's say that uh, if we are here which is let's say is x distance away from here then, then in that case the shear force will be uh, now i'll write the shear force calculation for different distances uh, shear force equation for the distance from 0 to 2.4 meter that's the x value so shear force at x distance would be then equal to because shear force is actually a force so it will be calculated as half base which is x distance this is a variable load it varies from 0 to 3.75 up to this 15 kN force so when we are here then what will be the value so that can be calculated by considering the two similar right angle triangle so these are the triangle so this is 3.75 the total distance is 2.4 so if you want this let's say y so then y over x would be equal to 3.75 divided by 2.4 so then this y would be equal to 3.75 divided by 2.4 multiplied by x so at x distance away from this exterior end we will have 3.75 divided by 2.4 multiplied by x that's the magnitude of this uniformly variable load at x distance so that will be multiplied by 3.75 divided by 2.4 multiplied by x so this will be the equation when we are dealing with shear force in the region from 0 to 2.4 meter so there are two axes are there it means the the variation of the shear force between 0 to 2.4 will be like a two degree curve it will not be a linear but since we can see it's a x square is going to be there so therefore it will not going to be the linear when we are at 2.4 distance up to here so we will just put the value as 2.4 here so let's see what we are going to get shear force at 2.4 just put the value so this is not x actually it's actually 2.4 so 1 2.4 will get cancelled this will be 1.2 so the answer is going to to be 4.5 kilo newton so it means when we are at 2.4 meter away at this point we will have magnitude of 4.5 kilo newton but uh, we have to keep in mind that we really take uh, the downward forces as negative and all those are actually the downward that's why this 4.5 kilo newton will be drawn at the downward side so let's say the 4.5 is somewhere here so this this variation between uh, this exterior point to the point where we have just calculated just actually 4.5 so this variability will be a two degree curve it will not be a straight line hopefully it makes sense to you so this magnitude is 4.5 
Now when we have reached at this point, we can see there is a 15 kN force acting, that's actually, that's actually a point load. So for that point load, we will have, again that point load is acting downward, so we are going to move that by the magnitude of 15 kN, so there would be a downward movement. So this is actually the movement at uh, exactly 2.4, here we have point load, so 4.5 plus 15 will make it the total shear force as 19.5 so the distance up from uh, this x-axis to this point will be 19.5 so up to this point it is now how we will move further for the determination of the shear force now we will deal the shear force between this distance of 0.6 so now the calculations will be for the shear force which is in between the x distance of 2.4 to 3 meter I mean the distance from here to here we will have an equation because again we can see there is a, a variable load is there the trapezoidal load now let's say that we are here and we are at a distance of let's say x which x is actually denoting the value between 2.4 to 3 now in that case what will be the shear force there is some obvious forces are there like 15 kN is the obvious force which is acting downward so negative in this case it was hold negative because of the downward nature of the force now we can convert this triangular force into the point load of 4.5 kN which is again downward and it's negative but uh, for this region we have to be careful so again let me draw this region here so that you can get the better understanding so over here the x distance is 4.5 over here the x distance is 3 so we are driving equation in between that here the the magnitude of the load is 3.75 kN but here we don't know so again this trapezoidal should be converted into its two shape this is known which is 3.75 the remaining have to be determined so from here to here the variation is like 6 km per meter means if let's say this is to be considered as y so when we are at a distance of uh, let's say from here to here the total distance is 1.5 meter the y value is 6 so 6 divided by 1.5 but when we are at a uh, distance of uh, just 0.6 then what will be the value of y so that will be calculated using this equation so from here we will have y value of y as this will not be actually 6 it will be actually the total distance we had that was i think 2.25 the remaining distance up to when we are at 6 that was 3.75 plus 2.25 that makes it 6 so it is actually not 6 actually it's 2.25 to add by 1.5 so this y is actually 0.9 so this y is 0.9 kN per meter so when we are at uh, some x distance within this region then there will be the two equations one would be due to the um, udl for udl the, the intensity would be 3.75 that is the intensity of the udl that is to be multiplied by the distance now the distance will be the total distance up to this point is actually x and that is measured from the exterior point if we subtract 2.4 from this x then we will have this remaining distance so this x is being subtracted by 2.4 that will be actually the magnitude up to this point we are not yet got the actual equation yet because we have to deal with this small triangle as well let me erase this stuff because i believe you have got the understanding of what we have done before now for the equation of this, it's a bit complicated but no worries, we are going to get it. You know the formula is half base and height. So half base, base will be actually x minus 2.4, quite straightforward I believe, no problem in getting that. Now the altitude, the height is actually the thing that we need to worry about. For that again we have to consider the similar triangles. So when we are at uh, 
exterior point is 0.9 but we have some distance of x minus 2.4 then what will be the so this distance is actually x minus 2.4 total is 0.6 so then we can have this by considering the similar ratio so 0.9 divided by the x for total which is 0.6 but what will be that y when we are dealing up to x minus 2.4 so from here we will have y to 0.9 multiplied by x minus 2.4 divided by 0.6 so ultimately we will have this whole equation as 0.9 divided by 6 and this is multiplied with x minus 2.4 so hold this ship we shifted here 1 upon 2 this is x minus 2.4 whole the square multiply by 0.9 divide by 0.6 so this is the equation when we are dealing in this region so let's see when we have the value of x equal to let's say when we are reaching at this point so in that case the x will be actually i think three meter so let's put the value of three here and see what we are going to get so on putting the value of uh, three meter because that's a point up to this point that will yield the value of negative two two point zero two kilonewton so when we are at this point we will have negative 22.02 and the variation between uh, this point and this point will not be linear that's governed by this equation you can see that is actually again a square so it will again be a curved and later on you can see there is a 75 kilonewton which is upward so then we are going to move upward so this point is actually negative 22.02 so we when we are moving up by the magnitude of 75 so we simply add because it's a upward hence positive so this is going to give us the value of up till here obviously this is not according to scale 52.98 kilonewton and in this case it's positive all these were negative and again we have a big thing to deal with again we have uh, some more calculations to be done for the region between 3 to 3.9 we have again to do calculations so that we can have variability for the shear force again raise all the stuff so that you can have better understanding now for the region between 3 to 3.9 the formula for the shear force will be now x is from 3 to 3.9 so the shear force would then be equal to and obviously that will be in terms of x now where is that x now x is over here and measured from the exterior left hand side so 4.5 negative downward 15 will also be negative 75 will be positive because it's upward now for the trapezoidal load over here i again consider the trapezoidal here so the trapezoidal that starts at a distance of uh, 2.4 and it's up to 3.9 and the uh, x is somewhere here and uh, we know that uh, this side is 3.75 and the total here is 6 and uh, to be precise this will be then 2.25 so x is up to this point from the exterior end so we want to know the y over here for that we are going to use the ratio of the similar triangles so the one which is known is 2.25 divided by the actual distance between these two which is 1.5 and the one which we want to determine is y and this x distance is actually x minus 2.4 so then y would be equal to 2.25 divided by 1.5 multiplied by x minus 2.4 so one is due to this uh, udl that has intensity of 3.75 obviously that's downward so negative 3.75 and uh, the distance is x minus 2.4 and the next one would be the triangular one which have the base as uh, x minus 2.4 and the y that we just calculated is this one so 
this will become a square and this will be 2.25 divided by 1.5 so this is the equation of calculating the shear force in between the region from 3 to 3.9 meters so we directly come towards the exterior point which is point a let's see what value we are going to get when you put the value of x is equal to 3.9 so shear force at 3.9 let's place the value and see what we are going to get so the value that we have just got is 48.2 kN. so the 48.2 kN would be somewhere over here now looking at this equation we can see there is a square there so obviously the variability in between these two points will not be a straight line but will be a 2d curve or uh, i think we can say like it's a 2 degree curve so this will be signed by a curve and if you see here the force the support reaction the vertical support reaction has a vertical shear force of uh, 48.2 kN. so this value is actually 48.2 so when we because this is downward so it will move downward so it will go back to this point so this is how the shear force diagram is to be drawn in this case uh, the loading was a bit complicated that's why we had uh, a lot of calculations required to draw the shear force diagram i have calculated the equation for each of the region wherever there is a change in the shear force so if you want to calculate the shear force at any point you just put the value of x in that particular equation wherever you want to calculate let's say if you if you want to calculate the shear force in between uh, 2.4 to 3 then you're going to use this equation just put the value and then you are going to get the shear force over there similarly you can have the shear force in the region between 3 to 3.9 using this equation so this is how we deal with uh, calculation of the shear force in next coming video we are going to see how we can calculate the pending moment for this type of loading that's all from this video thank you for watching this video i hope to see you in next coming video thank you